Hey there, no penguin here, and it's time to goon. Atlantean Dragoon, that is. Yes, after I thought Konami completely skipped giving this deck support, they have come back with some amazing support for all water lovers, giving us the best mermail support since Atlantean Prince. And the best part? There's still more on the way. But we're gonna see what the new Rota support has done for our second favorite water deck. So let me show you the power of the new mermail. Atlanteans. Quick heads up, I am currently live right now on twitch.tv slash nopenguin YouTube playing Master Duel. We're trying to get penguins to the masters, watch the video, and then come join us! And here is the list. Yes, this is my new updated Marmail list for the Rota format. And probably unsurprisingly, quite a bit has changed. Because in Rota we got five pieces of insanely playable support, and let me go through them really quickly. Front and center, we have Mermail Shadow Squad, aka Bodyguards. This card has two effects. On the field, you can discard a card to the graveyard. Water monsters you currently control become level 7 until the end of the turn. And if this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you get to special summon any level 4 or lower Mermail or Atlantean card from your deck. It does lock you to summon the water monsters from the extra, but that's. that's just not a problem. Next, we have Abyss Ride the Atlantean Spirit. This also has two effects. One, you contribute this card to the hand and an Atlantean or Mermail card from your hand or field to special summon any level 7 fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster from your deck, or you could choose to add that card to your hand. It locks you into waters, but again, that doesn't matter. Then, during your opponent's turn, you could, as a quick effect, banish this card from your graveyard, discard a card from your hand to the graveyard, and draw a card. And it really helps degum useless hands, because you can use this and any useless water monster you may have to actually get into some real plays. Next, we have the equip spell Abyss Sting Triana. It's very different than the other Abyss equips, as this is more of a monster reborn on an equip card. You could special summon an Atlantean or Mermaid monster from your hand or graveyard, and equip it to this card. It could also send itself to the graveyard to protect it from either battle or card effect destruction. And, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target up to three of your water bee monster types that are either banished or in your graveyard, and shuffle them into the deck. Next we have the new rank 7, Poseidon Abyss the Atlantean Dragon Lord. This requires either three level 7 monsters, or you could rank it up using an Abyss Gyrus on the field. Its effect states that you can detach two materials from this card to send a water monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard to return up to three cards your opponent controls, so it's really good on the crackback. But more importantly, if this exceeds summon card is sent to the graveyard, discard a card to the graveyard to summon three level 3 or lower fish, sea serpent, or aqua monsters from your hand and or graveyard. And you're going to see how great this effect is, but for now let's go into our final support card. Mermail King Neptibus. Two plus monsters, including one of the fishy types. Your opponent can't target water monsters it points to with card effects. Also, if a water monster is sent to the graveyard to activate a card or effect, you can take any of your Abyss equips, that being either your Mizuchi or your Bruce Triana, and either equip it to a card you control or add it to your hand. And on destruction, it recurs a card. But for now, let's do a very, very quick card by card. We, of course, have the Triple Abysses, but we are now playing Triple Abyss Pike. This is a card we really didn't use before, but is exceptionally good with the new support, as well as one other inclusion. Then we have Triple Bodyguards, Triple Spirit, and the Gunned. Triple Deep Sea Diva, Triple Nectabus, Triple Dragoons, everyone knows this, this is absolutely standard in every Mermail list, and the rest of our one-ups. We have one Infantry, one Moon Glacia, one Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coliacanth. Now, this is especially cool in this deck because, like I mentioned earlier, Abyss Ryan can summon any level 7 fish, sea servant, or aqua monster. It does not need to be a Mermail or Atlantean card. That means we could basically special summon this from the deck at any point, which is super cool. And is also the reason we are playing Triple Abyss Pike, because Abyss Pike is one of the few playable Mermail fish cards. And then we're playing one Rin Aggerade, one Deep Sea Minstrel, and one Armored Shark. We play this because this is an Armored AC card that we can search off of our XC Armor Fortress, which we can rank up upon one of our used Bahamut Sharks. It allows us not only to get an additional water card in hand for discard fodder, it also has a pretty good on-field effect that you can pitch a water exceeds monster from your extra deck to the graveyard to summon a fish monster in your graveyard with the equivalent level to the rank sent. The equipped spells we've already talked about best Tria and the Mizuchi as always, but we are now playing Virtue Stream. This is because we play a lot of level 3s in this deck, and we are also playing the Lee Virtue Dragon. Finally, some anti-hand traps. We play in Triple Crossout, 
one call by the grave, and one a piece of Nib, Fuoros, Ash, Valor, Droll, Infib, and Dominus. We absolutely do not want to get interrupted, so we are going to be doing everything we can to not see any of these cards affect our plays. Finally, the answer. We are playing the one Gamir Agreen, Poseidra, Gaios, Seed Armor Fortress, Virtue, Bist Dweller, Bahamut, Bahamut, Toad, Toad, Zealantis, Neptibus, Double Coral Anemone, and the Abyss Lacia. This deck is phenomenal. And honestly, this is one of the decks that if... And honestly, this is a pretty hard deck to put together because this is absolutely one of the decks that if we had 20 extra deck cards, we would be more than happy to fill all those out with cards we really want to play and just don't have the room. So now we're going to go into a couple of combo replays. After that, we're going to go into a live test hand so I can kind of guide you through my thought process in playing the deck. But for starters, let's go through a couple of our bread and butter combos to show you what the deck is even capable of. Let's do this. Our first replay is a 1.5 card combo, just Neptibus and literally any card you can discard. Today, I have stepped up to be that card. Obviously, we're going to start the combo by normal summoning the Neptibus, using his effect to send Bodyguards to the graveyard, not Dragoons. We are going to add Dragoons to hand. Bodyguard will special summon the Abyss Pike from deck, pitching the Dragoons to grab ourselves the Spirit. Goons will activate its effect to grab Moo and Glacia. Then we'll use Spirit's effect, sending our Lantern Prince to grab ourselves a Abyssus to hand, which will let us grab back the Dragoons, which will let us get into Bahamut into Toad. Toad is actually our fifth summon here, so this is completely Nibiru proof. Then we can pitch a card to go into the Abyssus to grab the Gund. That is five in the graveyard we can go into the moon glacia coral and enemy here to grab back the bodyguards bodyguards effect pitch the extra card we had in hand make both of them level seven go into the abyss then we go ahead use the effect discard a card to special summon three level three from the graveyard and because we discarded the gun we could bring back the abyssus and the atlantean prince will actually grab ourselves the Decina. we're going to go into gamir go into lavere dragon lavere dragon's going to grab the trap then we are going to play the tristina to grab back a gaios because we can also take one of the material from this and add it back to the Gaios. So all in all, this field is pretty good considering we really only expended two cards in hand. This has given us a full monster negate on the entire side of the opponent's field, an Omni negate, an Icarus attack, and Gamir's effect not only protects the field, but can banish whatever it responds to. So even if they're only activating something like, let's say, a Snake Eyes Ash, you could use this effect, banish it so it has no way to recur itself, and it's completely out of the way for the rest of the game. On top of protecting your cards you control from card destruction or being banished. And on top of that, the second I activate either Totally Awesome or Abyss Gaios, then Neptibus's effect will activate, bringing me up the Mizuchi from deck and equipping it to himself. That way, the next spell card that they activate will be negated. And again, this is done with only two cards in hand. So the other three cards could be additional extension to go into even more combos, or be hand traps and or protection to be able to let your combos go through and give yourselves additional interactions in hand. And as a final how do you do, all three of these cards are in the link zones of the Neptibus, so all three of these cards are protected from being targeted with card effects. This is, in my opinion, the bread and butter mermail combo that I am always going to want to try to go to if possible. Now let me show you a combo with a little bit of a difference. Now this is a very similar setup. We have the Neptibus plus a card to discard. But in this situation, we also have an Abyss Run in hand. Now what if we try that same combo, but the opponent has a way to interact and stop our Neptibus from resolving. So we are going to go ahead and play the Neptibus here, activate its effect to send the guards, but they are going to Ash that, so we're not going to be able to add Dragoons. Because from here we can cycle, and instead of grabbing it, we can just send Dragoons right now with the Rhine to get into our Coliacanth. From here we're going to grab the Moon Glacier, discard the extra card, grab three Abyss Spike, all negated, so we're not going to get any effect off. We're going to go into Moon Glacier, discard two cards from their hand, Coral and Enemy will bring back the guards, we'll go into Bahamut Shark, into the Atlantean Prince, we're going to go ahead and get a totally awesome because we sent something that lets us grab a Mizuchi. From here we're going to go Armored Fortress, Armored Fortress to grab an extra card, use that card to make both of these level 7 to go to Abyss Gaios, Mizuchi on that, and we are good. So even though they were able to interact with our Neptune, Abyss, we were still able to get an Omni Negate, a Skill Drain, and the Abyss Mizuchi from deck. However, if we had even just one more card to discard, we could do something like this. 
Now, if we have the extra card, we can use King's Effect instead to grab the Tristina from deck. That way, we can go into the Armor Fortress, once again grab the extra card in hand, use that effect to immediately go into Abyss Gaios now. This time, we are going to send both into the graveyard for a Coral and Enemy, using that extra card to bring back three level 3 monsters from the graveyard. That allows us to go into Lever and then use the Tristina effect to bring back the Gaios, and once again, give that equip card and give it an additional material. So with that one extra hand, that has allowed us access to the Icarus attack, as well as setting up a Zealantis play next turn with the Coral Anemone. As next turn, we're going to use Virtue Stream, sending the Armor Shark to the graveyard, destroying a couple of things. And if Coral Anemone survives, then Coral Anemone plus one thing in the graveyard plus literally anything on the field will make us a Zealantis and allow us to get rid of whatever remnants that the opponent has on their field. But I hope to show you just how good Abyss Ryan is to help us in those situations where we do get interrupted. Now, I want to take you into a live test hand and give you a bit of insight into the decision making behind some of the plays that I make and really importantly, the zone placements. Because in this deck, that is very important due to the protection that King gives us. So let's get right into that. Alright, and here is the hand we are going to work with. I restarted a couple times just to find one where I didn't draw Deep Sea Diva or Neptibus as that's kind of boring. We don't have one of our super powerful normal summons. However, we have both the Abyssus and Rhine, and these cards just by themselves are more than enough for us to get a little bit off. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Abyssus. We're actually going to be discarding Pike here as it's the most expendable card on the field, and we're going to use its effect and search out one of our Mermel cards. In this case, we are going to grab the Bodyguards because we already have Rhine in hand, so Bodyguards is not really that useful. From here, we're actually going to use Abyss Shrine's effect, pitching the bodyguards from the hand to the graveyard, and we can now special summon out any of these guys. I think for now, I'm actually going to bring out Kaliakan and special summon it, uh, but the important bit here is because we sent the bodyguards, we could actually rip Neptibus right from the deck. So even if we don't draw into them, because we have so much access to searching out Atlantean cards, searching out Mermail cards, it's always going to peel back into getting us into Neptibus. And then from here, because we've already used the bodyguards effect we're actually gonna just normally as we normally would send dragoons to add dragoons now right now we're in a situation where we have four cards already in the graveyard so we gotta be really careful about what we do next so we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves the mool glacia and then from here we are gonna actually go into coral anemone now, we have six cards in the ex in the graveyard, and we're going to go ahead and actually bring back Bodyguards, because as usual, we want to make sure we could use Squad's Effect to make the Moon Glacia a level 7. So, the next thing we are going to do is Special Summon it out. Pitch two cards from the opponent's hand, and at this point, I think I'm going to be using the Clycanth Effect to grab the remaining two Pike from the deck. Now, these cards' effect, again, are negated, so it's not too much here, but we are going to be able to get the Dragoon's effect for additional card advantage in hand. Now, at this point, I think I am going to be grabbing Atlantean Prince, or actually, I think it's better yet to grab Minstrel, because I don't think we have the required threes in the graveyard to get off our uh, play here with the Atlantean Dragon Lord. So I think this is the better play at the moment. Now from here, we are just going to go ahead into Bahamut Shark, really just clearing up a bit of the zones. And at this point, we can actually go ahead and get into the Neptibus Lord using both the Coral Anemone and the Deep Sea King here. Now at this point, we can go ahead and use the effect of the Bahamut Shark, pitching one of our pikes to grab herself a totally awesome. At this point, we can actually go into Triana here, go ahead and grab that to the hand. As if you haven't noticed already, we basically have the full combo that we originally showed off. Even though we started in a completely different scenario, we still have access to the combo. So from here, we're going to go ahead into Abyss Gaios, very fun. And from here, we're going to go into Poseidra. Now, right now, we actually have a couple of decisions. The two cards that we drew in our opening hand right now, Gund and Grave, if either of these were, let's say, something like an infantry, I would actually opt to go into Abyss Lacia. That way, you'd be able to use her effect as a quick effect to destroy an opponent's card, which is really good. Now, seeing as I don't have that, I'd rather not discard the Called by the Grave for just adding a Mermail card. At this point, I'm going to go for card advantage, so I'm going to go Xyz Armor Fortress. 
spoofing it over that to go ahead and use this effect to grab the shark here from the deck. That way, once again, we have an additional bit of discard fodder here, which is always awesome. Now, the reason why that this makes it so we can't go into it is this is actually a machine type. And as you can see in Abyss Lacia, she requires one of the fishy types, either fish, sea serpent, or aqua. So at this point, all we could do is use the water type to go into Coral Anemone. And we are going to do just that, sending both of these here to the graveyard. Now, I'm actually going to make the decision here to use Poseidon's Effect and not discard Gund. That's because Gund right now doesn't have a spot to activate her effect, so I really don't want to waste that right now. While on the other side, Armored Shark isn't that big of a deal that we are missing out on here. So I'm actually going to discard Armored Shark instead. Now we can grab three level three or lower monsters here from the graveyard. Now I actually opted to special summon the Neptibus here instead of a third level three for a couple of reasons. One is the other level three really isn't doing anything on this field, so it's kind of just sitting there doing nothing. And having a Neptibus here allows me to, on the crackback, if we do survive into turn three, threaten sending that heavy infantry from deck to, you know, start our plays, get a pop-off, really just allowing us to do that. Now, one mistake I will say here is because of how Edo Pro works, I wasn't sure which monster I was special summoning when, so I would have actually summoned Neptibus to the Coral and Enemy slots, because as is right now, when I'm going to be able to summon back the Abyss Gaius, it is not going to be under Neptibus protection. Now, obviously, this is not a problem if you're doing paper play, but because of how Edo Pro works and it doesn't actually tell me what I'm special summoning, I just have to choose a zone, it was a bit of a lottery. But at this point, we can now use Live Virtue's Dragon to go ahead and grab herself Virtue Stream here from the deck. And of course, we're going to use the Triana here, grab herself our Abyss Gaius from the graveyard, and then we are going to use Live Virtue's second effect to be able to... Attach a material from this to our Abyss Gaios. So things are looking pretty good here. Again, the zone placements are super important. This is a very non-optimal zone placement. I would much rather have these two switching spots. But all in all, even from a janky hand like that, where we didn't actually open directly into our Neptibus Deep Sea line, as you can see, the deck is built in such a way that all of these hands should be able to convene to get us access to Neptibus. Because Neptibus is able to be searched out from, of course, any of the cards that can search Atlantean cards, uh, from the Deep Sea Divas, drawing into those, or, of course, as you saw off of the Mermail Shadow Guard. It is so good, and this deck is just so much fun to play around with. And I already mentioned both Neptibus and Marincis' play on the crack back. What I didn't mention is if La Virtue does stay on the field, it could use its other effect. Instead of using its effect to detach material from it to the Abyss Gaios, it could actually detach its material to grab any fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster in your graveyard. So very similar to Totally Awesome, it's just another way to get more resources back into your hand to crack back for game. And we're back with the deck. This deck... This deck is so good right now. Mermails are easily my second favorite deck of all time. Honestly, water decks just hit so goddamn different. And the best part, these cards are pretty goddamn cheap. And I really hope you guys pick this up and bring it to your local tournaments. But before we end it all, a reminder, I am currently live right now on twitch.tv slash nopenguinyoutube. I am currently playing my penguin deck on Master Duel to try to get up to Master Rank. So if you're watching this on release day, there's a good chance that I am live right now. Link in the description. But as always, like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. I am no penguin, Mermail Master, signing out.